Good morning. Balloon safari. I am going to start. We are one hour journey. We So, we are going to the balloon safari. Seat belt. Okay. coffee. Super coffee. And homemade cookies. What's going to happen now is we're going to take you up to the balloons for a very important safety briefing. Uh, we have an important safety rule on the launch site. Once you leave this tea and coffee area, absolutely no smoking anywhere near the balloons until we've landed. And then please ask your pilot for permission. <laughs> My name is Bill. I am your pilot. Well, Hello. Uh, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I think um, people don't ask. But before I do that, let me introduce you to the crew. Good morning, crew. Jumbo. 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 These guys have been awake since two o'clock this morning. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> They'll still be working after we've had our breakfast. Okay, so the two questions that I know that sometimes people ask. How long has he been flying? Did he start yesterday? You look like a newbie. 25 years I've been flying. Okay. Oh my yeah. Thanks. And the other question I know I don't get asked is, where is the balloon made? Was it made in Tanzania? No. It was made in UK, in, the, in England, in Bristol. Okay. We maintain our balloons to the European standard, which is the highest in the world. You can tell the FAA that if you want. On the other side as well. These are going to be pushing cold air into the balloon, cold air, okay. when you are climbing into the basket. Please don't stand too close to the fan, especially if you have long scarves or really long hair, or even maybe the, the tail on your safety belt. Make sure your safety belt tail is tucked. If you look into the compartment, you'll see there is a seat, a seat in the bottom. Okay, so there is a seat here, and here. Okay. You climb in and you push down until you are sitting on the seat, but lying on your back. So your bags will be here. The driver guides will then come and take these long lines and attach them to the <coughs> ring of your harness. Okay. Once the driver guide has done that, he will give you your bags back. Please put them between your legs. Okay. okay. Bags and any really big cameras between your legs for takeoff and for landing. When I'm getting the balloon ready with hot air, please hold on to these little handles up here. You see the rope handles all the way along here. Hmm. Holding on for takeoff and for landing to these rope handles. Two hands, empty hands, no camera, no phone, hmm. okay? You need to be able to hold on properly. I know you forget, I will be checking, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Holding on until I say you can let go. Okay, everything okay so far? <laughs> Right, so while we're up here, up high, 
I'm going to rotate the balloon 360 degrees as I was requested to oh, do yeah. just now. But before yeah. I do that, you let me it's tell you about the Serengeti so you know what you're looking at. If you look this way, if you were to be able to see 100 kilometers, and today we can't, you'd realize we'd need our passports because that's the Masai Mara and Kenya. If you were to carry on going to the west, which is this way, we'd get wet because that's Lake Victoria. Oh, okay. And if we went far enough south this way, we'd end up at the Ngorongoro Crater. It's the Ngorongoro Crater that's uh, responsible for this incredible landscape. Uh, the volcanoes there millions of years erupted and covered this whole area for many hundreds of kilometers in ash. <clears throat> the ash is still there. Underneath us we have a thin soil now with uh, just grass and a few trees. It's not a good enough soil to grow very much. Underneath that is ash, and the ash has filled in all of the valleys and the contours of the land, which is why it's flat, except for the rocks. You see rocks sticking up over here and many other places. These rocks were here before the volcanoes erupted, and these are the tops of hills or mountains. Uh, oh. About 34 miles an hour. Oh. And we were going faster higher up. Opening kilometers an hour, what's that? That's 50, nearly 60 kilometers an hour. It doesn't feel like it because we're traveling with the wind. It is 50 kilometers per hour. Yeah, nearly. Oh my god. So who'd like to find. Guys, the reasons we drink champagne after a balloon flight, usually somebody says because we survived and somebody did say because we made it back down. <laughs> so yeah, that's the first one. The second reason we drink champagne after a balloon flight, because we like champagne. <laughs> the third reason takes a little while longer for me to explain. The third reason is because the French invented champagne and hot air balloon. In 1783, Les Frères Montgolfier, uh, in Annonay in France, built we a balloon. Live in you live in Annonay. Ah. Maybe your relatives. <laughs> is, really? is, is, is your family name Montgolfier? No. Oh, <laughs> in shame, I would have loved to have flown you. Um, so, uh, in 1783, the Montgolfier brothers built a balloon made of paper and wood. They were paper manufacturers. And they built it made of paper and wood and they sent animals up. And the animals lived. So they thought, maybe we can put a human up. So in 1783, they said to Louis XVI, because their Montgolfier brothers were very clever, they decided not to go themselves. They said to the king, they may die. Can we have a criminal from the prison, please? Because they may die. The king said, no, if they live, they'll be famous and we cannot have a famous criminal. It must be a French nobleman. So a man called Pilatre de Rosier was asked to do it. And he went up. He was the first person to go up. Pilatre, Pilo was his nickname. Pilo, Pilot, Pilot. I think this is where the word pilot comes from. Uh -huh. Not just for balloons, but for everything. And he flew. And he took the king's champagne with him. And he flew across the countryside. And the villagers and the farmers saw this burning, smoking monster in the sky. They'd only ever seen clouds and birds before. And he landed. And he lived. And as he was climbing out of the balloon with his champagne in his hand, the villagers and farmers came from far and wide to see this burning, smoking monster because they thought it was a devil. They thought it was the devil and they came to kill it. And when he realized what the problem was, he got the champagne out and said, no, no, look, I'm French, I have champagne. <laughs> today we carry champagne in case the villagers come. There is another interesting thing about Pilatre de Rosier. He was the first person to die in a hot air balloon as well. Oh. He was trying to cross the channel from, from France to England and he was never seen again.
Oh. So, so it's good luck to catch the cork. Anybody good at catching? Anyone play cricket? Only the British. Are good. Oh no, Plus. Indians. Indians. Plus. Of course. <coughs> yeah, it's a cork. Look, that's the Indian cricket is in the world. Yeah. Ready? Get set. Go. Woo! <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Really good. <laughs> okay, number two. Can you manage the second one? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's it. Yay! Yay. Yay.